As the world observes the International Day to End Obstetric Fistula, the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, UNFPA, is sounding the alarm that the sexual and reproductive health needs of women and girls could be undermined. With the current battle against the COVID-19 pandemic, health systems risk being overstretched. Transportation barriers, movement restrictions, rising costs and other effects of the pandemic are making it harder for laboring women to reach safe delivery services. UNFPA's Executive Director, Dr. Natalia Kanem, says, and I quote, the absence of timely medical treatment will likely spur a dramatic increase in obstetric fistula, end of quote. This traumatic birth injury affects the world's most vulnerable women, those living in extreme poverty without access to timely emergency care. Child brides are particularly vulnerable, and those with malnutrition and poor health also face heightened risks, and it could be worsening. And joining us to discuss this is Elizabeth Muller, United Nations Population Fund Nigeria representative. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. And it's good to have you uh, this morning joining us to have this very important conversation. Let's begin by asking us, uh, asking you rather, to tell us how the COVID-19 is affecting the progress being made towards ending obstetric fistula. Well, thank you very much for, for having me. And I, I actually think that both just uh, had from my executive director, uh, says it all. Because what is happening right now is that women are simply not accessing essential maternal health services. And that includes also safe deliveries, which puts them in an increased risk for, for fistula. Mm -hmm. There's many reasons they're not coming to the health facilities. One of them is, of course, that they are scared of contracting COVID-19. And another is also that at the health facilities, access very often is limited. Uh, reproductive health, even though it is an essential service um, with the Ministry of Health, is very often not perceived as such, so women are also turned away. And the challenge we have with fistula is that it's not considered an essential service. Um, so we are also taking this opportunity in UNFPA to call on the state governments to decategorize fistula as a non-essential service, making it an essential service and therefore increase the likelihood of a safe delivery for women across Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, Elizabeth, what is the UNFPA doing now to help mitigate some of the challenges posed by the pandemic? So we are, you know, increasingly also understanding that fistula is not only a medical, um, can you say, it's not only a medical, caused by medical conditions. It is also a condition that's caused by uh, social and cultural norms in society, such as um, female genital mutilation, um, early marriages, uh, whereby girls get pregnant too, uh, too soon before their bodies are ready for that. And that combined with lack of access to uh, safe deliveries increases the risk. So we are working with government, with NGOs, and we're working both at, at federal and at state level to increase access to services, but very much also with communities, uh, religious leaders, community leaders, to understand what we can do to drive change in a way that's appropriate in those specific communities and to make it acceptable to delay that first pregnancy for very young girls who's not ready to give birth yet. Mm -hmm. Now, a new analysis by UNFPA and partners on the consequences of COVID-19 and the rights and health of women, from a surge in gender-based violence to increased child marriages to 7 million additional unintended pregnancy and an estimated 2 million more cases of FGM over the next decade than the world otherwise have occurred. What are some of the plans to mitigate these predictions? So UNFPA is globally now uh, have made a call for action and that uh, came out actually from a Nairobi meeting we had last year, which still remains very relevant, maybe now more than ever before. So we will continue to work on ensuring access to safe uh, services. We will continue to work with Ministry of Health on how we can ensure reproductive health services continue throughout. And we will work with uh, Ministry of Women Affairs to ensure that we have an appropriate response to gender-based violence. And this is at the core of what UNFPA do. We, that's what we do. So we have three transformative goals that we will pursue uh, through the next decade and also through COVID. And that is to end 
unmet need for family planning to ensure that children are spaced and wanted when they arrive. It's also to end harmful practices such as child marriages and female genital mutilation. And it's also to have zero preventable maternal deaths. Right. And that's, that is the real strategy is that both fistula and maternal deaths are preventable. And therefore, we have to keep our eye on the ball and delivering those goals. Mm -hmm. It's reassuring to hear you say that both of them are preventable. Now, quality maternal health care services is a focus uh, for you. Does the UNFPA subsidize prices for surgery or they undertake full payment uh, for victims? No. Um, all services uh, and fistula treatment services that is rendered through UNFPA are free of charge. And we do that if that is made possible from very generous um, funding from the government of Canada, from the government of Korea, and also from the EU through what we call the Spotlight uh, uh, Project, and from the UNFCU Foundation. And also, and this I have to give credit for, some uh, Nigerian state governments actually also support our work to make sure that women can access surgery free of charge. Mm -hmm. The repair is critical. And also after the rep repair, it's really important that women don't get pregnant for 12 months to prevent a repeat fistula. And that means also whatever method uh, that women choose is also free of charge. Hmm. Elizabeth, uh, you would agree also that so far there are still a sizable number of women and girls who have not benefited uh, from the surgery. How does the UNFPA track those who are in need? This is where our work with communities becomes so important. Most women living with a fistula are stigmatized and marginalized in the societies and communities where they live. So it, is, it, it really is a disabling condition uh, that makes them socially uh, pushed out in the margins of communities. So we are working very closely with healthcare workers um, that is uh, at the, the Ministry of Health at state level and also at HEA level, the healthcare workers, the frontline workers, and with the communities uh, to find uh, and trace women who has uh, a fistula and also to, to reach out to them and refer them to treatment. And this is very difficult work because the women with fistula really are, sadly, amongst the most vulnerable but also very often the most invisible. And therefore we really have to go and meet them. And then we work with the survivors of fistula who has undergone a repair, who become very powerful advocates in their communities and also have the conversations with women living with fistula and explain to them that this can be uh, repaired and that life can change. Elizabeth, to wrap up, what is the key message uh, the UNP UNFPA rather, is pushing uh, during this pandemic? That reproductive health care, maternal health care are essential services. That fistula should be decategorized as an essential service. That no woman or girl should have to risk her life or risk a fistula because she cannot access the services. No one should take that risk when it's something that's preventable and doable. Great. No one should take that risk. It is preventable and doable. Thank you so very much, Elizabeth, for your time. And do keep safe out there. Thank you. And the same to you. Take care of yourself. Thanks for having me. I will.